hello pupils. Uh, I hope you are uh, fine, wherever you are. Once again, we are going to discuss science and technology and uh, we will continue with the disease as we discussed in the previous lesson. We passed through different things in the disease, meaning and types of disease that is infectious and non-infectious. We saw some examples of infectious disease and we took uh, our case uh, discussion there. That was uh, uh, malaria. We discussed malaria, we saw the causative and the mode of spread. And today, pupils, we are just continuing with one of the infectious diseases and uh, that one today will be cholera. So uh, today we are moving on with the second example of uh, infectious diseases, and that is cholera. <coughs> cholera. Now, uh, my beloved pupils, uh, cholera is one of the infectious diseases or communicable diseases which is caused by a bacteria called Vibrio cholera. Vibrio cholera. It is a bacteria. Uh, mode of spread, it is spread by housefly. And this is the disease that has been common to, especially this our region, because sometimes uh, sanitation is uh, not taken control of. Now, uh, it is a disease that majorly spread due to poor sanitation, poor cleanliness of our environment. That, that means we should make sure that uh, our environment is regularly kept clean. When talking of the environment, we don't only mean uh, inside, perhaps uh, washing utensils, uh, but that one should be inside and outside outside the compound, slash the grasses, drain out stagnant water, make sure the environment generally is clean so that we can avoid. Now, uh, let's just write something here. Uh, I've said this is a bacteria uh, disease. So it is, uh, we say, it is, it is a disease caused by a bacteria, bacteria called a Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae. It is a, a disease caused by a bacteria called Vibrio cholerae. Uh, and how is it spread? Now we say. It is, it is spread, it is spread by housefly, by housefly. <clears throat> so this is the vector. Now, when housefly uh, lands on your food from maybe the toilet or dirty environment, uh, it may be carrying a germ. It may be carrying the vibrio cholera. When it lands on your food, that means it will leave that uh, bacteria on your food. Then when you, go, uh, when, when you go to eat the food, the food shall be already contaminated. That means you, uh, you shall now be eating a contaminated food and thereafter you will get this disease called cholera. Now, let's just see uh, the symptoms accompanied by this disease here. Symptoms. Uh, my beloved pupils, uh, perhaps some of you may have known these symptoms, but majorly we have vomiting and diarrhea. Vomiting and the rarity. Among others, these are the two major, uh, the two major symptoms. And we are not just talking of the slight vomiting. 
Uh, perhaps you have eaten a certain food that you have felt that the taste was not clear and you have started vomiting. No, we are, not talking, we are talking about the severe vomiting and the rarely. Those are the two major, the two major symptoms. Uh, together with others, I would not say that they are the only major symptoms, but they are, they are the two main. So we start with uh, vomiting, and the other one is diarrhea. Now others will be uh, body weakness, body weakness. Dehydration simply means loss of water from the body. Now, that is uh, caused by these two things, vomiting and diarrhea. Vomiting and diarrhea. So, we just uh, proceed by saying, <coughs> uh, vomiting, or oh, let me just not put it like severe vomiting and diarrhea. Severe Severe, severe vomiting, vomiting and diarrhea. Can be added 
by uh, different process. Uh, at our home there, at our home there, we use something called rehydration solution. Rehydration solution. This rehydration solution consists of three things: one solvent and two solutes. One solvent and two solutes. The solvent will be water, <coughs> clean water. You mix with sugar and salt. You mix with sugar and salt in the same ratio. Now, uh, I have just said that when dehydration occurs, we will, we will uh, take the remedy or we'll get rid of, of this effect by doing something called uh, uh, rehydration. Rehydration. So let's check. Rehydration. The term rehydration means what? Rehydration. I would say rehydration simply means uh, addition. Addition of water to the body. The the body. Addition of water to the body. Now when doing this re uh, rehydration, we'll use rehydration solution. Rehydration, rehydration solution. This rehydration solution consists, we we'll say, <coughs> it is a solution It is a solution consisting consisting of consisting of uh, water plus sugar plus salt. Water plus sugar plus salt. So, uh, dear pupils, they are all. Even if the person may not have been suffering from cholera, even if the person may not have been suffering from cholera, but you have seen these uh, uh, symptoms, whether severe or slight, uh, please you can use this one to just increase the body. Remember, uh, vomiting and uh, and diarrhea are accompanied by removal of watery substance from the body. Those watery substances, that means they carry water outside the body. So automatically, a victim must lose some amount of water, which is very dangerous. If at all, a person loses some amount of water from the body. Uh, now, these are what we should do. So uh, when we are asked about uh, Rehydration solution, it is a solution given uh, or it is like a first aid rendered to a person vomiting and diarrhea. And this first aid is rendered by mixing up, forming a solution of water, sugar and salt and giving. It is an oral, it is, uh, it is given orally. So you will give the person to drink and later on other measures may take place like if they uh, uh, problem persists, the victim is to be rushed to the hospital for further medical process. Uh, let's describe this term diarrhea. Let's describe this term diarrhea. Now, diarrhea. Uh, this term diarrhea simply means removal of watery feces. Frequent removal of watery feces. Frequent removal of watery feces. I would say uh, this is the frequent. Or oh, it is a frequent. Frequent removal of watery feces. 
frequent removal of watery feces, watery feces. Uh, when we talk of watery feces, we talk of uh, uh, feces which component of it is made of uh, I amount of liquid, I amount of water. So frequent, when you remove this one frequently, we say you are diarrhea. Not that you have gone to the toilet and slightly uh, you have removed uh, just a portion of feces which are accompanied, which is accompanied by water, by water. Then you say under no, we say frequent removal of watery feces. This is referred to as diarrhea or diarrhea. So please take that action. Now, uh, in our next uh, discussion, we will see the second, the second common uh, infections. I'm trying just to pass through these common infection diseases that we meet daily in our environment, like this one. This one, we do meet it many times in our environment. Many of our relatives, many of our friends, in one way or the other, may have come across this one here. Now, uh, the next one will be Bilazia. So, I am requesting you kindly, my dear pupils, to pass through uh, this disease, Bilazia, and know the symptom before we all discuss it. In our next lesson, uh, we will discuss Bilazia, see the causative, the mode of spread, and how we can avoid it. I have just said that. Uh, to avoid this disease, we should make sure we maintain environmental cleanliness. Clean utensils, make sure your food is well covered after cooking, make sure the toilet and that the bedroom are clean, make sure the outside environment is very clean, rubbishes and whatever are in place. Thank you very much, my dear pupils. See you in the next discussion.